Hey guys, long time no see. As you know, I've been taking a bit of a break from YouTube. I just haven't felt like uploading like at all. And I've also had some personal things going on and I've also had people visiting. So Daniel came home from uni for a few days and then the day after he left, Jessie came down to visit and then the day before she left, Amanda and two of her daughters came to visit and it was so wonderful to see everybody. It's been a bit full on and I'm still on a break. So I did want to film my June faves and fails, even though we're halfway through July already, but I don't know when I'm going to be uploading again. Thank you so much to everybody who's reached out to me via DM or email or comments saying that you're thinking of me, you hope I'm doing okay, and that you must see my videos. It means a lot to me and I really appreciate it. I am doing okay, just super busy and winter blues are kicking my butt and yeah so I'm fine but I'm just not in like a YouTube headspace at the moment and I don't want to just film things for the sake of it and upload it because that's going to come across and I do this because I enjoy it and I want to enjoy it when I do it or I'm not going to want to do it so right now I just don't want to do it and I hope you can understand that. I'm not gone forever I'm hopefully going to be coming back soon I've started to feel a bit more inspired and have some ideas and yeah we'll see how we go but for today I just wanted to share the things that were fails faves and what I read during the month of June and I'll start with a fail as I always do so that we can move on to more positive things and the fail for June was the mascara I'm using and I'm trying to get through because I don't want to just chuck it out like I don't want to waste it but I despise it and it is the L'Oreal Lash Paradise Mascara. I started using this because it was recommended by Sherry Petersick on Young House Love Has a Podcast or on her Instagram. Anyway, she loves it and she raved about it and she says she's been using it for years and it sounded like something I'd enjoy. I like a natural bristle brush. I like length and separation and like more natural looking lashes. I don't like clumpy lashes. I don't care too much about volumizing or all that jazz so this looked like something I would enjoy I cannot get on with it I'll show you the brush well okay first of all the brush is quite fat I have used fatter brushes so I could still work with that but so much of the product comes off on the brush like when you pull the brush out it's just globby and loaded and it wasn't great when it was new it's not great when it's getting older I've tried thinning it nothing makes this mascara something I want to use so yeah so I'll show you so when you pull it out just look how much is on there it's just it's globby and loaded and it makes like little clumps when I put it on sometimes it makes my lashes stick together in clumps which really annoys me but it also even if the lashes are separate it makes like little blobby clumps on each lap it's horrible it's horrible and like I said I'm trying to use it up because I don't want to be wasteful but I do not look forward to putting on mascara when I'm doing my makeup and every single time I'm like ugh so I think at some point I'm going to cave because it also seems to be going on forever so if you do like this mascara or I don't know I was going to say like if this sounds like something you might enjoy who would enjoy any of the things I've just described but I'd be interested to know if you've used this and if you do like it I just did not get on with it and I've got an Anika mascara sitting like a backup sitting a brand new one waiting to be opened and I'm so tempted to just ditch this draw line under it and move on to my Anika one so we'll see I suspect that may actually happen before I've used this up okay moving on to food I have a recipe that I want to share it's the chicken shawarma that was shared in a TV program I'm going to talk about and in Nadia Hussein's book called time to eat it is so easy and it is so packed with flavor and so delicious i would highly recommend it i will link the recipe down below for you also i wanted to mention mrs rogers herbs and spices so i have little herb jars that i keep in my kitchen and then i just refill them i buy whatever brand herbs and spices to refill my jars that i use so i don't actually use the packaging that herbs and spices come in and while i know glass bottles that herbs come in can be recycled it takes a lot of resources to recycle glass and even more to recycle plastic. So I was so happy to find Mrs. Rogers Herbs and Spices which come in cardboard packaging. The bag inside is not plastic, it's actually compostable. So they come in the packet like this and then the packet is kind of... 
kind of rolled up like this and it's popped into a cardboard packaging and then it even comes with like a little wooden clip that you can well this is zip, zip closing but some of them come with like little wooden clips that you can use so hats off to mrs rogers i so appreciate having an option that i can choose at the supermarket that does not involve plastic it's something that's important to me but it's frustrating when pretty much everything you buy is packaged in plastic and you don't really have a choice about it so really grateful to have a choice Something that is packaged in plastic that I discovered is goat cheese gouda. You guys know how much I miss cheese. I can't eat dairy, I haven't been able to in years, and cheese is the thing that I miss the most. And I can eat goat's cheese, like goat's cheese feta, but it's not the same as like cheese on toast or like melty cheese. And I discovered goat cheese gouda and it tastes more like cheese. It does have like a goaty flavor to it, but oh, it was so good. I was so excited to discover it and to try it and it's so delicious. I don't like vegan cheeses and not only that, they very often use ingredients that I just can't eat. There's so many things that I can't eat that I have intolerances for and reactions to and whatever. And goat cheese gouda is a new find that I can eat and it was so good. So I'm not going to eat it all of the time. It is a bit of a treat but discovering a cheese that is cheesy that I can enjoy now and again was a huge highlight of the month for me. In terms of fashion or beauty, there's a pair of shoes that I have been wanting for ages. I had an idea in my head of what I wanted. I wanted a pair of camo trainers or like sneakers, like uh, Converse style, but I didn't want it to be to this or to that or to anything. And I found the perfect pair at number one shoes and it is these and I've been wearing them all of the time. Aren't they so cute? I love that the um, binding on it is not white. It's like a taupe color. This is by Life and Soul. That's the brand. And like I said, I got them at number one shoes. And look at the nice fat sole. Very 90s. They're so comfortable and they're just perfect. And I just love the extra kind of detail they add to my outfit, even though they are neutral. They were $39.99 if you're interested. We had some friends around for dinner and they brought a board game with them called Jask or Jask. It's J-A-S-K. This was so much fun to play. You can play it in teams. I guess you could play it with just two people. But the first time we played it we had two teams and then the second time we played it we had three teams. And it was just so much fun. I'm not going to explain the whole game but I will link it down below. It's kind of like, it's a board game but it's kind of like... A cross between Chinese checkers and 20 questions where you get a letter and then you have to name I don't know like girls names or whatever with that letter within 30 seconds so it's fast-paced it's fun everyone can play there are different card prompts in the game for younger players and for older players so I think it's a game that would suit all different families and we really really enjoyed it and we're thinking about purchasing it for ourselves I wanted to mention my new lens so I showed you guys my broken lens a while ago. So on my camera, I had my 16 to 125 mil Sigma lens most often. I do have other lenses that I put on for specific things, but that was the lens that was my workhorse lens. If I was going out for the day and I just wanted to take my camera in one lens, I would have that lens on it. I bought it in about 2006, I think, and I really enjoyed that lens. The reason I bought it was I had a portrait photography business and I was taking pictures in my home and I needed a lens that had a wide enough angle that I could fit an entire family in, but that wouldn't kind of give a fisheye effect. But then I wanted one that had a wide enough range that I could also have some zoom on it. Anyway, it stopped working. It zooms all the way in, like to 125, but I couldn't zoom all the way out. And I looked at having it repaired and it was going to be so expensive that in the end I bit the bullet and I bought a new lens. And it is the Canon EFS 18-135 to with image stabilizer and all that jazz. And it's on my camera and this was about $600 so it was not cheap at all. But cost per use I just thought like I used my last one for like 14 years before it packed up. And I did have it repaired or like cleaned and serviced a couple of times during that time and I definitely got my money's worth so I knew that this would be a standard workhorse and it would see me through. I kind of almost felt like it was just a basic purchase that wasn't all that exciting it was just replacing something I'd already had 
Turns out it's super exciting and it is not just replacing what I had. This lens is so much more than that and I've been enjoying it so much. So first of all, this is 18 to 135. So I have 10 mil extra zoom on it, which is fun. But also the, okay, this is going to be like geeking out about lenses. If you're not into this, skip ahead. But I know some of you are into photography and will probably be interested. So on my last one, the Sigma one, I could be about maybe that far away from some something. That was my minimal focal length. So if I was taking a picture of a flower or something, I could I had to be that far away unless I had my um, extension tubes on it. This lens, I can go like right up close. So it's actually a macro lens as well. And the images that it produces are just so beautiful. It's creamy in the background. It's sharp. It's just gorgeous. I've so been enjoying it. That is just a quality piece of kit and it was worth every penny. Also, it is completely silent. So my last lens I showed in a vlog, it, it would make all kinds of noises as I was focusing like zh, 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 like it was not silent at all. This one, okay, let me like focus on something outside. You can't even hear it. It's completely silent. So that's been good that it's not a noisy lens and it's just, it just feels sleek and good quality. The one thing I don't enjoy about this lens, which is not even a big deal for me, but I did know this before I bought it, is it does not work with extension tubes. And it won't focus, I can't use manual focus, it literally does not work with my extension tubes. But that's so not a big deal because, you know, the broken one that would only zoom out as far as 35mm and not all the way, it works other than that. And when I use my extension tubes, I zoom in all of the way. So it's fine when I take this lens off. Like before, I would take my lens off, I would put on the extension tubes, I put my lens back on and then go and take pictures. So now I just take this lens off, put on my extension tubes, put on my old lens and use it for that. So it's totally fine because I've kept the other one. But other than that, I just, I love this lens. It's been so much more than I anticipated. I've really enjoyed it and I would highly recommend it. Okay, moving on to entertainment. On Netflix, Grant and I have been watching Dead To Me. We've kind of watched all of the episodes that are available and now we're waiting for new releases. It is so good. It's a dark comedy. It's got Christina Applegate and I think she produces it as well. It's just brilliant. It's, I can't even tell you what it's like. It's not like anything, but it kind of in some ways reminds me of Desperate Housewives. It's not anything like Desperate Housewives, but that kind of dark comedy and there's just like twists and turns along the way and I just think it's really really good and we've really been enjoying that together so I wanted to mention that as a recommendation if you're looking for something to watch. We also watched Nadia Hussein's Time to Eat. I've actually watched this three times now. So I watched it with Grant. It is exquisite. First of all it's the BBC in conjunction with Netflix so you know it's going to be quality. It is so beautiful to watch. Nadia is beautiful, the kitchen is beautiful, the cinematography or whatever is beautiful. The food is beautiful. She cooks things that are so accessible. She takes shortcuts. Everything's easy to make. Everything is like even Grant, who doesn't generally cook, was watching and going, I could make that. And we've made a few of her recipes like the chicken shawarma that I mentioned. It's just such a treat to watch. And so I watched it with Grant, Jessie came to visit, I watched it with her, she absolutely loved it. As at one point she turned to me and she was like, I'm so in love with her and I'm like, me too. And then Amanda came to visit and I watched it with her as well and it just never gets old. So she makes a few different recipes in the program and she also takes a field trip. So she goes to like the Marmite factory or a baked bean factory and she shows how these things are made which is Grant's favourite part of it. It's just so enjoyable and so accessible. She's kind of like, like the way she cooks is similar to maybe Jamie Oliver, like really down to earth, basic, good food that's really flavorsome. And the things that I've made, I have enjoyed, except for I made a chorizo fish stew. That's one of her recipes from her book because I got the book out of the library. And I don't know if it's just the ingredients I used, but like all you could taste was chorizo. So I don't know if I'd make that again, or if I did make it, maybe I would substitute like lamb sausage instead of the chorizo. I'm not sure. But everything else I've made out of her book or like from the program has been so delicious. But even if you don't cook, if you enjoy eating, or if you just enjoy looking at beautiful things, I highly recommend Time to Eat. It's such a treat for the eyes and I'm sure you'll enjoy it as much as I did. 
Moving on to podcasts, I have discovered a few new ones, one of which is No Stupid Questions. So I'll read the blurb from the show. Stephen Dubner, host of Freakonomics Radio and Angela Duckworth, author of Grit, have spent decades exploring the weird and wonderful ways in which humans behave. Dubner as a journalist and writer, Duckworth as an academic and researcher. And the two have been asking each other interesting questions ever since they became friends years ago. Now they're turning these conversations into a podcast. So they will come up with a question and then they'll explore it and they'll also share the research behind it. And it's so, so interesting. It's entertaining. And I always learn something. Another one that is so interesting, it's science-based, but it's entertaining, is The Happiness Lab by Dr. Laurie Santos. So I heard about her in an episode of Armchair Expert, which I've shared before as a favorite podcast. The Happiness Lab is so good because... Basically, we think we know what's going to make us happy, but kind of the strap line of the show is what if your brains are lying to you or what if they don't know any better? And then she explores the science of what actually does make us happier and it can be the complete opposite of what you think it's going to be. And you can incorporate these things into your own life to become happier. It's so interesting. I love that she backs it with science, but it's not kind of like boring and heavy. It is enjoyable to listen to. So I highly recommend that one too. And then I finally got into At Home With. So Lily Pebbles is a YouTuber. You probably know of her. She's one of the OG YouTubers. And she and Anna, whose channel is the Anna Edit, have had this podcast called At Home With for a while. So it'll be like At Home With Zoe Sugg or At Home With whoever. They go into somebody's home, they look around, and they basically interview the person. But it's just like girlfriends having a chat. It's really enjoyable to listen to. I, I knew about this podcast when they started it a couple of years ago. And initially I was like, oh, I don't want to hear about people's homes. I actually want to see them. And I don't want to have to download this particular app they talk about, which will pop up the pictures as they talk. It didn't really interest me. But they just brought out a new season, which is different to the previous ones. And I started listening. I like went back to the beginning and listened to the At Home With episodes. You don't need to see the pictures, although some of them you can Google. It's just so interesting and entertaining and fun and lighthearted and... I've really been enjoying it. So their latest season is not at home with other people. It's kind of at home with each other, except they don't live near each other. So they call each other on a video call and record their podcast. And it's more like, so they discuss what's a favorite for the week. They discuss food and entertainment and beauty. And then they talk about a particular topic. So I've really, really been enjoying that, enjoying the dynamic. And I would highly recommend at home with. And then an armchair expert podcast episode was Ibram X Kendi. So I will leave a link to the episode below. You don't have to have a podcast app or normally listen to podcasts or anything. If you just want to listen to this episode, you can click on the link down below. It will take you to a web page and you can just listen there. It's current. It's relevant. It taught me so much. And I just think it's a must listen for everybody. An Instagrammer that I discovered is Sudden Journeys. So she is an American who is living in England at the moment and she has a son and a daughter and what she shares on Instagram and in her Instagram stories is just exploring what England has to offer. I'm pretty homesick for England at the moment. I don't want to live there again but I'm still homesick for it and sometimes looking at or listening to British things can make that worse but at the moment it's making that better. So this is really helping giving me my England fix. And it's just so soothing and so beautiful, the things that she shares in her Instagram. It's, I really, really enjoy kind of sitting down in the afternoon, going on Instagram, and then just like immersing myself in the British countryside and the villages and all the quirky little things that she shows. It's, she shows the best of England and I've just thoroughly been enjoying that. So with things that have been going on, which did really affect me, I haven't talked about Black Lives Matter or anything on my channel. I have been listening and paying attention and learning. And one of the things that I realized is how vanilla my YouTube suggested videos are. So when you go onto the YouTube homepage, there'll just be like heaps and heaps of videos that are suggested to you before you even click on your subscriptions. Now, I have literally hundreds of subscriptions. I don't watch every video that every person I subscribe to uploads, but I like to have a wide range to kind of choose from and see what I do feel like watching. And I watch a wide range of videos. I watch people whose lives are completely different to mine. I watch food channels. I watch gardening channels. I watch vlogging channels. I watch family vlogging channels. I just, I have a wide range of things that I enjoy or want to choose from. And some of that is reflected in my like 
suggested videos that YouTube will dish up to me, but I realized that everyone's white and it made me angry because I want to see diversity in my feed. I don't want YouTube to go, oh, you watch a white gardener, so here's some more white gardeners. No, I want to look at gardens. I don't want to just look at white gardeners. I want to see a wide range of people who garden. I sought out some black content creators and I'm making an effort to interact with their content in the hopes that YouTube will kind of pay attention and start showing me more of these content creators because they need to be promoted. They need to be shown and have their audience grow just as much as white people do. So I'm not going to just sit here and go, here's a whole list of channels for you to follow because I am exploring them with an intent to actually engage with and, you know, consume the content. And I can't just suddenly start watching 50 channels. Like I don't have that kind of time or yeah so I've have found some that I have really been enjoying do want to recommend and I will be recommending more going forward but this month I'm only going to share three with you the first is Kelly Stamps she is hilarious she lives in New York she kind of just shares her life she does share some life advice she's just so funny she's got this like deadpan demeanor but Anyway, I think she's really funny. I love her self-confidence. I love her take on life. The next is Paige Danielle. I've actually been watching her for a while. She has the most adorable baby. She has the cutest Southern accent and she does kind of vlogs and she also shares like home decorating and tips and tricks and I really enjoy her videos. She's, she's just so cute. I've enjoyed her fashion videos that she shared in the past or like haul videos, so do check her out as well. And then Manny Ortiz, I've also been watching him for a while. He is a professional photographer, his wife is a model. He shares different tips and tricks and advice and like if you're not in a beautiful environment, how to still take beautiful portraits and kind of get around that really enjoy his videos and I love his humility and he shares some personal things as well and I just love his take on life and he just seems like a nice guy and he's very very talented as a photographer so I will recommend his channel as well. So like I said I am discovering new black content creators and I will be sharing them going forward but it made me realize that I haven't shared the ones that I have already been enjoying so that's why I wanted to mention them. Okay moving on to books I read seven books in the month of June. I read The Maxwell Sisters by Loretta Hill. I really enjoyed this. I loved the setting and the family dynamics and just the different kind of secrets and stories they each had and how it all came together. It's a freezing cold, wet and rainy Friday afternoon and I've just been out in the garden for eight minutes, literally eight minutes, to get a couple of things done and just tied it up a little bit. And that's all down to this book, The Five Minute Garden by Letitia McClough. You can see her name there. I heard about this book from The Middle Size Garden and it's wonderful. I loved the introduction. I'll read you the first paragraph, which I just related to so much. In her introduction, she says, let me tell you a story. It's about a garden. The garden was large for its city location and its owner had made sure that every inch of it was full to bursting with flowers. There was neither rhyme nor reason to the placement of each plant. Nature weaved its merry tapestry in the borders and the place buzzed with life. It was beautiful and magical and overgrown, a law unto itself, and people loved it, soaking up its summer bounty. So this kind of sounds a little bit like my garden at the height of summer, but what I related most to was the next bit. But its owner spent her time swinging wildly between love and loathing for her garden. She loved the wildness and the color, but it also made her feel panicked and overwhelmed. The grass grew out of control and her children opted for the park instead of the garden. There was nowhere to sit and relax or eat or walk about. The garden had got away from her and the balance between human and nature, represented by a garden, had got wildly out of whack. So this was her story but I just, I was like yes that's exactly how I feel about my garden. And the premise of this book is that if you just do five minutes, if that's the very least you expect of yourself, five minutes a day in the garden doing something, you will stay on top of it. Because obviously there's gonna be days where you get out there for your five minutes and you kind of get into the zone or you start enjoying it or you get involved and you obviously do more than five minutes. But even on a day like today where it's cold and wet and rainy and miserable, 
you can suck it up for five minutes and every tiny little bit helps. But for me, what's most helpful about it isn't what I accomplished during those five minutes, it's how I feel about my garden. I feel like I'm in touch with my garden rather than sitting inside and thinking about all the things I need to do and then sometimes spending like six hours in the garden. And then it just feels like such a big job that then I put it off for a long time while feeling overwhelmed and panicked about how it's getting away from me. So this getting me out into the garden or doing something, even if it's just kind of titivating seeds that I've harvested, has changed the way I feel about my garden. I feel so much more enjoyment. I feel so much more engaged with my garden and more on top of things. So the introduction kind of shares her story and then the rest of the book is broken up month by month and she talks about little things you can do in the garden during those months. So she breaks the tasks down into spruce, chop, nurture and fuss. So spruce is obviously like tidying up and neatening things. It could be sweeping a path or raking up leaves or whatever. Chop is anything that needs cutting back or harvesting. Nurture is like moving, planting, taking stock of things and fussing is like deadheading and composting and things like that. So like I said, each month, which are opposite to our months because this is written in the Northern Hemisphere, each month there is something that you could be putting your attention to in the garden during your five minute bursts. I know this is a really long segment to be talking about one book, but I thoroughly enjoyed this and it's made a big difference to me. So. I wanted to kind of share more about it than just to say I finished this book and would recommend. I read City Woman by Patricia Scanlon. This is book two in, I think it's a trilogy. I read City Girl last month and there's another one called City Lives and I thoroughly enjoyed this one. I finished reading Tending Roses by Lisa Wingate. The other books that I've read by her were kind of more comedic. This one was a very sweet story. I really enjoyed this and kind of the message behind it. I finished reading Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid. I really enjoyed this. This was insightful and relevant and I would highly recommend it. I read After the Storm by Linda Castillo. This is one of the Kate Burkholder books. I really enjoy this series and I enjoyed this one too. I read The Second Worst Restaurant in France by Alexander McCall Smith. I absolutely love his writing. I've talked about his books before. He just has such a unique way of writing and insight into people and kind of an amused affection for people. This wasn't my super favourite. I really enjoy the Number One Ladies Detective Agency books, but I still enjoyed this one. So that is all for my fails, faves and books. I feel like I've been filming forever, but then again, I feel like I haven't filmed in forever. So I still feel kind of strange talking to a camera. It's always weird kind of getting back into it. Thank you so much for your patience with me and for just hanging in there. I promise I'll be back. I'm not like quitting YouTube or anything, but I just needed to take a break. And on this break, I realized that it's the first time in actually years that I've had no work. Like some days I've had no work because normally if I take a break from YouTube, I still have Airbnb going on, I had Rebalance going on. So there was always something going on. But at the moment, we had a guest in for a month, so I had no like Airbnb things to manage. People tend to book kind of last minute, so there weren't bookings to manage. I wasn't obviously getting in there to clean. And then we had friends staying. So I didn't have Airbnb to manage, and also I didn't have YouTube, and of course we've closed down Rebalance. And I was like, huh, this is the first time in a long time that I've just been and not had work to do. The only work I was doing was managing my Moving to New Zealand Facebook group. So it's been really, really nice and I'm not going to be gone forever. I'm going to hopefully be filming soon. Maybe not four videos a week, but hopefully I'll be coming back soon. And I just wanted to say thank you for your support and thank you for your patience with me while I kind of have a bit of a holiday. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.